Ramble. Thank you to Rosetta Stone and DoorDash for sponsoring this episode. Soccer time. No. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed. We vetoed it. No, we not allowed. vetoed it. <laughs> Here, if we we should have a rule, we can't say soccer this entire time. We have to call it football. 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 Now, here's the thing. There mm-hmm. is a perfect quote for me to start this episode. It's my favorite quote of the movie. Mm-hmm. It's a quote that when I started watching it, Maggie mm-hmm. said it. But I don't feel like I, I, I... I can say it. Because it's about boobs. I can say it. And it's also, I think... Her accent is part of what makes it so charming, and we're not going to do that. But the line is great, and I don't want to talk about boobs, but you will. Here we go. Juicy like mangoes. Welcome to Guilty (laughs) Pleasure. The full full line is, your mosquito bites will look like juicy, juicy mangoes. Juicy, juicy mangoes. Juicy, juicy mangoes. That'll make even these mosquito bites look like juicy, juicy mangoes. Welcome to Guilty Pleasures. It's football time. Football season. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, look at you. We're gonna bend it like Beckham because today we're talking about bend it like, like Beckham. Beckham. <laughs> uh, we're doing it. A They're delightful sports. movie. So many of you had demanded Scream that Y'all we do this episode. Us. It's like, how dare you never do bend it like Beckham? Well, because I asked for for international films, you know, yeah. Britain. Is international. It's international. It's across, across the, the pond. pond right? Across the pond. Should we do this in uh, British accents then? N- you can. You bet. All right. In it. In it. In it. In it. All right. All right. All right. You're right. I you're love. Right, okay, we just did a tripod episode with two little British blokes. I don't know what's coming out first. This is probably coming out first. And I ask because I love saying how, the way that people just enter a conversation, saying "All right." All they right. just go, "You all right?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm fine. Why?" And yeah. they're like. What do you mean? You just and walk like, up to somebody and be mean? like, all right. Yeah. You all right? And then you'd be like, it's pretty good, innit? Yeah. Oh, I fucking love in it. Good in it. In it. I like how it's spelled. I will say I watched this movie with the captions on, even <laughs> though I've yes, seen well. it 70,000 times. Of course. This was one of my mother's favorite movies. Really? Um, this and The English Patient, which is a very broad spectrum, but huh. she loved it. My relationship to this movie is I was this film. I grew up playing soccer. It was the first sport I ever played. You grew played. up playing football. Oh, American. You, we got through not even soccer. not even a second. Soccer, baby. Jesus Christ. Football. I football. was the best on my team until I got to high school. Then I started doing drugs, kids. <laughs> I was not as good at running anymore. So, Kelsey, just real quick, when you say that you're supposed to say, "Don't do drugs, kids." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You you pointed at the kids and said, yeah. "I was doing drugs, kids." <laughs> yeah. Um, which but kind le- of implies that you want them to do it too. <laughs> the the lesson was that she started sucking at football yeah. after yeah playing uh, after d- uh, starting. But drugs. damn, I had them long legs, kids. I yeah. had yeah. long legs. Stop call- talking to the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave the kids alone. <laughs> I was a gazelle. I could run my feet You're about to fucking pick up a ukulele and start singing Toxic Gossip Train. Leave Leave it alone. Leave the kids out of this. Leave the kids out of this. Listen, kids are running and running with your orange slices and your propels in your mouth. Ooh, what's that? The smell of shin guards. Grass. Nom, 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 (laughs) nom. I fucking lived and died. Are you doing an NBC fucking live? (laughs) (laughs) Nom, nom, (laughs) nom. No, 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 no. The smell of grass. Shin guards. Like, Orange the- slice, please. Orange <laughs> yeah. slice. Yellow car. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Orange slice. So good. So good. <laughs> I fucking love soccer. I love this movie. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Both y'all didn't play. Shut the yeah, fuck up. I'll play. have you know I played. that I, d- I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think but so. But I played in kindergarten. Okay. And my dad was the coach for the team because none of the other dads would do it. So Uh-oh. was I. And he bought a book called Soccer for Dummies. Huh? And uh, one time we were playing and an airplane went overhead and everyone stopped playing and watched the <laughs> airplane. <laughs> wow, Zach, that's way cute. Zach, you're from New York. <laughs> I thought that was going completely <laughs> down. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm 
so sorry. I like I genuinely had a hard stopping moment. It's like, please, oh, no. please, for the love of God, do not tell me this one. This fucking happened. It started so wholesome. My dad bought a book called Soccer for Dummies. I tell the cutest story of all time, <laughs> so and you think it's a 9-11 I, story. I, oh, I'm my so, God. I God that's Let me good. round it out with my dad's alcoholism. My dad also <laughs> all soccer teams, and he, we used to have this big-ass red thermos. It was literally like two gallons, and the little bit I know. Daddy's special coaching juice was rum and coke. Oh, okay. All right. Big two gallon rum. <laughs> Did he ever fight the ref? Oh, my dad has been kicked out of multiple children's Great. sports games. Great. That's a good dad. Mostly honey. softball, though. That's a good um, dad. Yes, a ball is life. Football is life. We're talking about Bend It Like Beckham. It is the 2002 indie breakout. I, yeah. This was an independent film that was a smash hit. That's honestly part of why I thought it was so, like when people were recommending it, I'm like, guys, this was a phenomenon. Yeah. I don't think people remember that this movie like shook the world. Mm -hmm. I feel like once a decade, uh, there's one feel-good, charming British soccer comedy yeah. that takes America by storm. Yeah. Ted Lasso, <laughs> yep. it's your turn. And then we go right back to hating soccer again. Yeah. Can I give the synopsis? Go oh, ahead. Please. Bend it like Beckham stars our girl Jess as our Punjabi lead. She loves her culture, but there's one thing she loves more. And that's football. football. Yes, that's right. She plays with her pals in the yard. And what's this? Who's this little fucking six-pack, short-haired, fucking tall drink of water? That's Kira Knightley. Yep. She says, hey, girl, why don't you come join the football <laughs> squad? We got a girls team. Yeah. Our coach got some big-ass lips yeah. you would really like <laughs> to look at. Come on, girl. And what we see is that there's something between our two lead girlies playing soccer. Ooh, what is that? It's compulsory heteronormativity. What did you say? Compulsory heteronormativity. What does that mean? Compet. It's like um, we are compulsively shown to be heterosexual human beings. And so we believe we're just supposed to fall in love with men. It's it's when you live in a compact oh, word. Mm, cool. And they are definitely gay. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're I, lesbian Yeah, we, we have to talk gay. about We're, we're going to talk a lot about this, this because it's like. a lesbian coming of age It's a movie film. with queer subtext that oh, it ain't then that becomes, subtle. that then it's becomes very, yeah, it's like very a vert text. And then they go back to it being like, no, that was mm -hmm. a subtext. Uh, so, okay, we'll get Coach into it. And Coach Joe, and they've got to choose between their family and their dream of going pro. This is Bend, Bend It Like Beckham. Beckham. Nice. First, first pleasure. David Beckham is hot. David Beckham <laughs> is an attractive man. Facts. It's like, it's, it's low-key unfair how uh, high football... High-key unfair. Yeah, high-key unfair. How footballers are probably the most lucrative athletes on the planet, uh, well-paid athletes on the planet, and then a lot of them are pretty good-looking. David Beckham say, was unfair. the first to really put like yeah. the idea of being a brand as a soccer player. I think that if you're ether. talented athletically, shouldn't be allowed to be hot. Shouldn't be allowed no, to. No, 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 no. Because I don't think I'm it's currently fair. fucking a professional soccer player, and I, I think that man is attractive, and I'd like to keep it that way. You know, I... We don't rem it didn't really hit America the same way that it hit the UK, but Beckham fever was intense. Yeah. Mm. Did you watch the doc about him? No, I, started I need it. to I need to watch it um because I want to see him <laughs> roast his wife <laughs> in a very funny way where she tries to say that she was uh um she came from a working class family, family and yeah. then he was like, No, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> he popped his head back in. What did your dad drive? What did your dad drive? And she had to say that she his her dad drove a, a Rolls Royce. Oh my god, that's awesome! And he's like, yeah, exactly. Do you think that was really him in the last scene? I, you know, I was wondering. I, I couldn't tell. I feel yeah. like it wasn't because they were able to just get lookalikes. I think. They I think it wasn't him. But then yeah. I also it made me wonder, like, did Ray, they have to clear up? his name? But then he's in the opening, so so the movie opens with like uh, archival soccer footage. But that's fair use. 
Yeah. It's fair use or America fair? might be different. What's up? Is America different? From from like footage putting use? putting like footage of, of games or commentary on, or anything? Yeah. Like if you could I mean, right, you could oh. play stuff. That's how they got um all of the 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 basketball footage for Uncut Gems was the fair oh. use. Yeah. Uncut Gems. It was a look alike. I thought so because they did not give us any. He didn't. He wasn't walking like someone who is used to yeah. walking and being mm -hmm. photographed. Mm -hmm. It says both he and Victoria Beckham wanted to make cameo appearances, but scheduling proved a conflict. Yeah. Little did they know they well, missed out. Yeah, they well, and also did. this movie, like what again? It was but, it was an indie film. This yeah. was not yeah. supposed to be big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they. I mean, it makes sense that he would want to do it because he lended his name to the film. D is it? For did he? Do you have? To I also that? I have no idea. I mean, we'll see if there are fun <laughs> facts at the end. But I um yeah yeah I don't know. Do you need to clear the name Beckham? I assume you have. I, I just yeah, don't know. I, was, I, I feel like if you're talking about the person, yeah. you, yeah. you have to. And they're referencing him and his soccer footage a lot. They have his poster on the right, wall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's all over it. He's all. Over uh, it. This was a bit. I mean, there were a couple Kira Knightley breakout moments. Obviously, Love Actually. Obviously, Pride and Prejudice. Obviously, Pirates of the Caribbean. But this was one. I guess yeah, just every one. time she showed up on screen, it was a breakout. Oh my <laughs> god! And you yeah. were just like, "Oh my god, I maybe that maybe I am oh, gay." Oh my god, that's not Natalie Portman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always say, and <laughs> it's an unfortunate. But yeah, it, I'm Kieran Eileen and Natalie Portman share the same space in my eyes. You know what my first pleasure about this film is, is that it didn't stray away from how strong and com and seriously competitive women soccer slash football players yeah. are. Yeah. Tell me about it. Because you train together. You were literally practicing like three times a week together. You got up yeah. early at six o'clock for games. Like we were fucking balling. Scraped knees, fucking sweaty brows. Like it's like the rugby or the American football of sports for girls. Like it is, I was about to say brotherhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's like sisterhood. There's gotta be a word for that. Yeah, yeah. to ooh, the most ooh, ooh, It's ooh. like brotherhood, yeah, but, but the lady version. Women. women. Uh, and like they show that really well in this film. Like they show them like really training hard. They show the games are really tough. They show how intense it can be. And I like that they also had feminine uh, women playing yeah. mm -hmm. the actresses too, because I think a lot of times the stereotype would be to like butch us up. But right. mm. I really liked the way that it portrayed women's soccer in this film. That's my pleasure. Yeah, it's great. Um, and it is also really cool that um, they recognize the fact that the USA uh, women's team is far superior. Yeah. And if you want to make it in women's soccer, you it, which is the complete opposite for men's soccer, mm -hmm. you got to go to the USA mm -hmm. to like play or whatever because that team is just the best. insane and yeah. it's the best. They always make it to the World Cup final because USA, mm -hmm. USA, USA. And I love how realistic they were about showing Keira Knightley always in a sports bra. Always in a sports bra. That woman was in But that was like soccer shorts. That was yeah, shocker, and sports soccer shorts in a in a in a sports bra. And um, everyone, every girl knows what headband I'm talking about. The spiky one that was oh, yeah. about yay big. And then when you put it in your head, it got this big. It was spiky and it held your hair back. And it was yep. all of our pixie <laughs> by bobbed top queen tier. top tier level tool. Um, what was I gonna say about? Oh, that was that was the Mia Ham look. Mm -hmm. Always, always Mia Ham. Mia Ham was um the premier. League? Athlete of the, the, the Premier League, Sorry. yeah, Premier Athlete of the '90s. I feel like it was. Oh, I, I, yeah. It's damn near her and Michael Jordan. Oh yeah, in my opinion, I Michelle, agree. Yeah, what, uh, what was the redheaded one? No, but she, Michelle. She was. She was '90s. Michelle Williams. No. <laughs> Destiny Shaw. Um, Michelle fuck. Tanner from. Full Can House. you look it up, Rainy? What the redheaded soccer player from the '90s, Michelle? Michelle Trachtenberg. No. Michelle Branch. No. Because you're everywhere <laughs> to me. She was like Mia Hamm. Ackers? Yes. Michelle, Michelle Ackers. Ackers. I mean, yeah, I feel like dog. because you played, yeah, um, not dog, you knew no. Maybe her. she's as physically talented, but she, she was. was not she Mia, was Hamm. Mia Hamm. Mia Hamm, Mia Hamm. Mia Hamm was like the shit. Yes. For years. Mia Hamm was like Babe Ruth status. Yeah, yeah. It was wild how like you would just... It was damn near. It was it was Mia Mia Ham and that lady doesn't look. Yeah, familiar she looks to you? familiar. Oh, but I I feel like Mia Ham was just the Adidas goat. Um.
I feel like I am always running behind. I'm always low on time. There are never enough hours in the day. And with all of that, I don't know how I'm expected to uh, cook for myself, to go shopping. If you are like me, Dash Pass is the one membership you need to get the most out of DoorDash and everyday life. Dash Pass members get $0 delivery fees and up to 10% off eligible DoorDash orders, including groceries, drinks, personal care items, and more. Dash Pass makes delivery even more worth it, helping their members save more than $35 per month on average. Plus, Dash Pass delivers way more than just tonight's dinner, including special access to experiences, promotions, and Dash Pass exclusive menu items. All of that for only $9.99 a month. Sign up for Dash Pass now and you'll get your first month free. Put a little joy back into your schedule. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code GUILTY and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more. After signing up for Dash Pass, subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass with code GUILTY. Subject to change, terms apply. Sign up for more. Become a Dash Pass member today. Guys, learning a new language is hard. I'm gonna be honest, didn't do well in Spanish in high school, but I picked up Rosetta Stone and it's made things so much easier. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program. It's available on desktop as an app and it truly immerses you in the language that you wanna learn. There are trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered. Rosetta Stone immerses you in so many ways. There's no English translation, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Very important. The built-in true accent feature gives you feedback on your pronunciation. It's convenient with desktop and app options. The lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any and all trips. So don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash guilty today. I also, it, it shows just how deeply entrenched racism is in the, the UK, UK yeah. that the premise of this movie is Indian girls play soccer? It can't be. What? Like, what? And I'm like, it, it's that's not crazy. Honestly. But maybe it is. They, I don't know. But like as an American girl watching this film, I remember being like, that was the first time I ever saw like an Indian wedding portrayed in a movie uh, like yeah. that. Like, cool. I was yeah, it might be true for me. It was, it and was, I remember being like, those look fun as shit. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely an Indian movie. Yes. And it was just Huge placed for that. in the fucking um, in Europe or, or in the UK. Yeah, because her parents, like she had immigrant parents, like they were trying yeah. to fit in. Like it really showed. I didn't realize how much of the culture it was responsible for showing me mm -hmm. without even recognizing it, it until now that I'm like an adult. Right. It, it, it's such a delight in the film, and it does a great job of showing her community, her parents, the the whole B story with her sister's wedding is just like, first of all, her mom, also let me say, comedic right. highlight of the film. Oh my God. So she good. is, every line she says, oh. bars, one-liners. Yeah. <laughs> So Everything funny. that she says in Punjabi also is funny. And isn't Wait. her dad a famous actor? He definitely I is think somebody. So. He was wearing He's a fake beard the whole huge. time. Yeah, um, his name is yes. Anupam Kher. He's uh, considered one of the finest actors in Indian cinema. Damn. Yeah, but he's also, we know him from something. Silver Linings Playbook. Oh. He's the psychiatrist in my oh, favorite oh, David O. Okay. Russell film. There you go. Yes, and he's uh, the one who like loves the Eagles. Oh. Right. Yeah. And he's like, I love the Eagles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there, there yes, is, yes, yes, yes. There's there is interestingly this this common thread of indie films that break out to like uh, phenomenon status right. seems to be that element of bringing us into another culture's family and I mm. and I think of my big fat fat Greek wedding mm. <laughs> classic indie film <laughs> that was Damn. what that's crazy my big fat Greek wedding was a nothing movie and it was a phenomenon what studio do you think financed that. That movie came out of nowhere. Are you confusing it with Mamma Mia? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but that's funny. <laughs> Wait, uh, my big fat Greek wedding. I, it just feels so commercialized to me. No. Oh, and I they mean, had um, Aiden from Sex in the City. Wait, is that the recent one? No, that's the original. Let me see what the budget on that was. It was a five million dollar movie that went on to make over three hundred and sixty million dollars. Yeah, it just feels so commercialized. That's indie. and pop to me. I guess it's because we just see it everywhere. Yeah, and I watched it a lot as a kid. I don't know. Yeah, it was a phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. I I mean this didn't. I don't know if this movie. Actually, I wonder. Want to know how much this movie made? Because it felt like I remember it being like thing like and like you had to go see it <clears throat> then it like beckham introduced me to david beckham i didn't know what? anything about him and then i found out like from this movie and i was like what are they referring to with bend it and they're like you could kick the ball in a way to where it curves yeah that yeah. was a and revelation was like, oh shit foot. are you out of your fuck that's sick as hell on our team that could do that vanessa wrangle I, I didn't know that either until this movie, and it, it was a revelation to me. Yeah. I, I want to talk about some of the filmmaking in this movie Ooh, because on. it's well made and is also a film of economy. Mm. Um, I, I think it's a really impressive, impressive in how much they get from so little. Mm -hmm. And if you pay attention, like to just from a script perspective, it's the park, a small soccer field, the house, mm. the park. Yeah. The park again, mm -hmm. <laughs> the house, mm -hmm. yeah. the soccer field. And then when they're on in a soccer game, it's an empty field. And then they have one sliver of the crowd yeah. in a close up. It They get so much from so little. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I just felt like it's a kind of a great lesson in writing of. Yeah. How right. Much you, right. Realistically. Yeah. How much do you really yeah. need to see? How much are you as a person actually experiencing outside of, you know, you being in really, really close proximity with other people. And I liked the way that they shot the matches even, like being in the pitch or whatever. Like they showed these slivers of almost like silences of mm. like a a breath and then yeah. a kick and yeah. then like a goal and then a header. And yeah. it was like, oh my God, they shot the intensity of the game the stakes were felt really high even though it was vi it wasn't these wide stadium sweeping yeah, shots it, yeah you really like yeah this movie proves that you don't really need that i remember watching like ted lasso and like hoping that they would have like these extreme soccer moments where you're, you're like seeing the entire crowd and all that stuff and they had that every so often but there would you'd see like a lot of digitized members of the crowd mm -hmm. um and honestly Watching this movie, I'm just as hype, and so I, you definitely don't need it. And I think so, I got like, more I, hyped. I, I think got, this, the soccer in this is filmed great. Yeah, yeah. especially for a low budget movie, it's like you yeah. have uh, kind of these wide angle, intense follow along shots mm -hmm. of the soccer ball through the grass. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, and it felt real. Like I kept watching for the cuts of like when the girls aren't actually kicking it, but they did use a lot of like their movement i mean for the more fancy footwork stuff i'm sure they had doubles but i i felt it i could smell the sweat on them mm. can i tell you i think bend it like beckham is one of the best movie titles ever and mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell you why tell oh wow why. first of all so fun to say yeah mm -hmm. but the idea of bending it like beckham is is this uh uh to bend it like beckham that idea is a curved soccer shot mm -hmm. This movie never sets up that as a challenge mm -hmm. that Jess can't do. Mm -hmm. It never really Jess doesn't have a flaw as a character. She's a she's someone who is trying to like prove to her yeah. family whatever. You get to the climax of the movie and there's a foul shot and everyone's lining up PK. and it's the big <laughs> moment, the penalty kick and you as an audience go, "Oh fuck. She has to bend it." Like Beckham. Because she's there learning. Was a, wait, there, she is trying to learn how to which, do that throughout which one, the film. There was a penalty kick and then there was a free kick with the wall. Which one the are wall. we saying? Is there a difference? Yes. Yeah. Damn it. A PK <laughs> is the one she mit, she get the goalie he, catches. The goalie it, catches it. And okay. then free kick is the I'm one. talking about the free kick. The free kick. So yeah. she is learning from the beginning how to bend it like Beckham. And yeah. she's not good at it. They don't show that. Yeah, they do. They show it like they show her multiple times. Trying to kick, times it, trying to kick trying it over. To learn how to twist nah. it. Nah. Yeah, I remember when she's the clothes are hanging in the yard and she kicks it around the, the 
and mm. that's when we're like, oh, she can do it, but it's too bad she quit soccer. Oh, there right. goes, there goes my theory. Yeah, when you were saying it, I was gonna stop you, but I just you were you really saw, riding. I, was in. Yeah. <laughs> I just let. I it go. feel like on there. the the title <laughs> it sets up uh, tension that wouldn't be there for me otherwise. Yeah, it like. I get to that final scene and I go, oh, oh shit. Yeah. She gonna do the title. She's gonna yeah. do the title. She gonna do the title. Instead of they're gonna the, say the, it. The meme. DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, the DiCaprio meme. Yeah. It made me so excited for that. And like, yeah. I didn't get it. Yeah. And then when it's there, I'm like, oh. Yeah. I get it. I, I in that moment, I really, and I thought I remembered seeing this the first time I saw it, but I really wanted to see the ball. Yeah, I a, really wanted to see the ball POV. hit the <laughs> like hit the air pocket or whatever, and 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 actually bend. Um, it does. You do. No, the, it's no, the it's camera's POV, POV is the, the ball. ball. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. What did you say? Oh, you wanted to see the ball. I wanted to see the ball. Here's one. Thank you. Can I say this is a uh, a movie of seeing the wrong thing at the wrong time over yeah. and over again? That, All the conflict is, comes yeah. from ah. Uh, Whoops. You you walked in on the guy hugging her and lifting her up in the air at the wrong time. Therefore, yeah. your mom's mad that you're being touched by a guy in public. Yeah, that's against our culture. Up, oh, you're getting caught hugging your girl pal what that's a- got a pixie cut that yep. looks like a boy, and now the neighborhood thinks you're a lesbian. It's a lot of whoopsie doopsies, and it all comes back to one thing: everyone too homophobic in this film. Well, also everybody's afraid to be gay. Yeah. Also, there was like so much. She just gets caught. So like yeah. she just gets caught. Like she's a dead giveaway. She's a dead giveaway. There are so many times where she secretly goes out to play football. Oh, almost did it. Oh, um, she secretly goes out to play football. Um, and then they they just catch her. So, she's yeah. bad at being sneaky. She's bad at being sneaky. Yeah. She sucks at it. I want to talk about the gay. Because th- I mean, th- <laughs> this movie has Talk my favorite genre trope, which yeah. is the surrogate lover. Mm-hmm. You have two uh, uh, same-sex best friends mm. who clearly want each other, mm-hmm. but will use a opposite-sex third party mm-hmm. to consummate their love. Yeah. In this case, it is Joe the coach. They're yeah. both in love with Joe. Nah, you in love with each other. Mm-hmm. We've seen this. I mean, that's Fast and Furious, right? It is Fast mm-hmm. and Furious. I was going to bring that up. Dominic Toretto and Brian love each other, but they have his sister as the surrogate lover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you then see. in this, the surrogate lover, like, there's queer subtext that becomes overtext, which becomes... So we, we got to talk all about the, all of it. Yeah, I, I don't know if you want to talk about I Joe first. Like, I feel like those rules only apply to American cinema. Mm. I know that from this movie that because we were all as kids going like, they're gay. They're going to kiss. Like, oh, she's she's mad that uh, her best friend's about to kiss the coach. But it's not really that. It's because she wants to kiss her. Like you can take out some dialogue in this film and make it a queer love story. And that's why I thought that Joe was her brother. But here's the thing. The, I think it was either the director or writer, because there's fan fiction all over the internet about right. this, said that she wanted to include a queer love story between them, but she didn't want to offend an Indian audience. Got it. And oh. because same-sex marriage didn't become decriminalized, not mm. even legal, right, decriminalized sure. till 2018 in Whoa. India. Yeah. So like the fact that this could have been that film, they were like, we're not we're too afraid to make that it won't appeal to a broader audience but what did america do the second we got our hands on it we fucking gay. made him gay as hell it's we were gay. like this we know what you wanted we saw what you wanted so, okay interesting so it is because i know that this is iconic queer coming of age mm-hmm. story but then so much of the movie is like no we're actually not gay and it d- did it feel right to either of you like, did the coach relationship with Jess actually feel honest? No. 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 Exactly. And it comes out of nowhere. It really yeah. does come out of nowhere. They have no very chemistry. Little chemistry. They have they have less chemistry than him and Kira Knightley, who I thought were brother and sister. <laughs> See, I disagree. I think him and Kira Knightley have got this like, we grew up in the same town. <laughs> You're my pal, not my lover. And you just want them to kiss. I want them to kiss. Yeah. But like her and the coach, it was giving like coach student the whole time to me the whole time well and then he like 
he like scolds her in front of everybody. And then she's like, you didn't have to yell at me. He's like, I have to treat you like everyone else, Jess. And you're like, wait, what? Right, and that, then I'm like, oh, this about? is kind of, uh, I don't yeah, like this. Forced. And then you're like, wait, so now this became like these two girls who <laughs> no, were sorry. besties and empowered by each other and like living like their dreams. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, uh, I, I just got an image of him dancing in the club. Oh my Dude. God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> the most dork of dancing <laughs> you will ever see in any movie. I'm sorry. I don't even know how to begin to describe his dance and how to tell you, audience, that everyone in on full display the worst dancing you've ever seen. Yeah. Jonathan Rice Davies especially, but Keira Knightley, she is not giving it on the dance floor. No. Wow. no one was really. No, no, no. She's not yeah. I, You know, this occurs to me, I don't know that I've ever seen British people really dance. Not true. Tom Holland. He yeah, can dance. He okay, it. so then what the fuck is these people's excuse? Um, none. 90s? 90s. Club? Uh, Culture? Yeah. Kira Knightley also, can we talk about her top? Because, ugh. <gasps> what? In that club scene? Babes. Oh, babes. Babes, bad. take it back. Babes, back at you. Oh, yike. Oh, I babes, even, yike. Big yike. Yikey, yike, yike to you. Um, I, I will take uh, it. Shoo, shoo. I will take shoo, shoo. it. I want it on my body immediately. You what would. Uh, Let's you know what? I'm going to say you would. Tried Bring up a picture. This. How could you? You would. Oh, it was shiny and it was stupid. It yeah. was shiny? Are you crazy? But Jess, her outfit was fucking... She was banging. She That's was because she I had mean, she her Princess fantastic. Diaries moment. She took her hair off and put lip gloss on, and everyone was like, <gasps> I mean, it's she took her hair down. It's a nice, sleek black dress, and then yeah. she turns around and, oop, showing a little back. We oh, love. She got a little back. We love a little back moment. Yeah. Kira was wearing this. a shiny napkin. Are you out your gourd? Oh, oh yeah. That's like the classic. Yeah. Stupid. It's a classic Zach, look. you've been vetoed. Stupid. You've been so fucking. No, it's all troopy. She comes out, and I'm like, I literally have you know what it is too. You know what it is in that scene too is that I felt Kira made me sad because she's so naturally beautiful, Mm. and her character is trying so hard. So like, she walks out, and Jess is wearing this like understated, beautiful black outfit, and she's wearing this like shiny, droopy, cleavagey disco ball. With like that's like being held together with silly string. It's your PG friend versus your PG thirteen friend. Your but friend who fucks also, and your friend who's yeah. never done it. And then yeah. and then Kira Knightley is like, "Come on, Joe, you gotta dance with me." Yeah, Let's yeah. Dance. She was trying and hard. They're dancing like the puppets in Team America, oh, hilarious, just oh, wow. wiggling their bodies back yeah. and forth. Yeah. And I felt it made me. I was like, "No, oh girl, yeah. oh you're oh trying God. too hard." TikTok has a whole like section dedicated to Kira Knightley's top from that scene. That's funny. <laughs> And what do they say? That it's iconic. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's a, oh, that's a, no. That's a classic yeah. shirt. Like that. I didn't even know that that was from this movie. Yeah. And seeing it, I'm like, oh, okay. So after the big match, mm-hmm. they kiss. It's an exciting, like, you know, the way yeah, that, like, we, we all kiss. No. No. <laughs> no. I don't know. Like, they kissed in excitement. And no. The, and I've the, never kissed no, my No, I've girl never. Pal. Yeah. <laughs> I've never. Not in excitement. I, I've, I've. In in a cartoonish manner, grabbed someone's face and gone like, "Wow, you beautiful thing!" Or something silly where we've known it's coming. Yeah, that was like a whoopsie doopsie, slipsy kissy. We both wanted it. Whoopsie doopsie, slipsy kissy. Yeah, <laughs> and the mother sees it. Then they're driving the car. They go to Jess's sister's wedding. They get out the car. Jess's sister is about to like. Like, be sent off, just married. And this white bitch runs up. First of all, Keira Knightley, also wrong here, runs up and hugs Jess. Like, you're wearing a a button down that you just threw on. You Get out of the way. You looked like a Sunday school teacher. Do not inject yourself into this moment. Respect the dress code. Yeah, honestly, the fact that she wore black and white in general was very offensive. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I learned this. Maggie was watching the movie with me and she goes, do you know that you're allowed to wear white to a Desi wedding? And Uh I go, why? I didn't know that. Why? She's like, and then she just goes, "Mm mm-hmm. There's no upstaging a Desi bride. (laughs) That's That's hilarious. Why do they wear red? She said it like she was... Like she, she said it was, like she was Desi. Like she was Desi. <laughs> she said it like she was Desi and like she was judging something on Great British Bake Off. Yeah. It was like, there's no upstaging the, the cream or whatever. Like, Jesus Christ, Maggie. <laughs> I just felt like so put in my place. And I'm like, okay. And right. I'm pretty sure white was an American thing to ascribe to virginity. Cassidy, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but Ooh. then the mom runs up oh, and is like, 
uh, she just like starts screaming lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. front of, and then the in front of her family, and then their family was just like, "We're not Lebanese." No, and which she is goes, so. I, she was born in March. I thought she was a Pisces. Oh yeah, I thought she was a Pisces. <laughs> I was like, "She's not a Libra." <laughs> like a Libra. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's crazy about it too? I mean, it's such this like so rude. If you're gonna yell, run up and yell at my daughter yeah. for being a lesbian, maybe don't do it uh, don't do as it the bride is getting into her car. Yeah, but then it has no uh, residual conflict. Which thank all. God. It just it, it, that's right. the there, end of the I, lesbian story. I think there was like too much um, conflict going on there. I think there was like going on to our our lead. What is it, Jess? Going on to Jess's character in general, and so adding another thing where it's just like, and then you just. You you're you're a lesbian now, and you like football. And that's like the and, fifth time that their yeah, gender and sexuality had been questioned. Where the mom wants her daughter to be this feminized, blah blah yeah. blah. And it's like, guys, we get it. Yeah. They are supposed to be gay. Yeah, it was, they it were. was too many. You have the um her male best friend who is gay, mm. and he has the pointiest sideburns I've ever oh. seen. Oh, I saw the, somewhere that online that said that he might have been bi because there's the line where he's like, I like Beckham. And she's like, oh, I thought you liked me. And he's like, I do, but I don't want to marry you mm. or something. So it was like, was it giving male bisexuality on screen? Yeah, could it could. Okay. They now, Garrick, so on, the, on the pointy sideburns you said, that's a vibe? Oh, no, that was just, uh, that, that was the vibe of the times, getting a very, very pointy sideburn. Whose times? Um, the nineties. <laughs> what time? The early two thousands. I had a pointy sideburn. You did. You did. It was awful. But yeah, I'm gonna need to see a photo. I, uh, you, you had pointy sideburns. Yeah, I first of all, sideburns. <laughs> I can't imagine your little baby. Yeah. Ladies. By the way, if you've never seen oh Rick's God. little tiny, cutest I got really ears, small ears. He has little ears that I just want to chip right off his head and snack on them. It absolutely sucks baby because whenever I wear a mask, my ears just hurt, hurt so badly. <laughs> They're not strong enough. They're not strong up. enough. <laughs> They're little baby ears. Uh, fun fact, my nickname Littlefoot came from my soccer team. Oh. Did that make you worse at so at football? Yeah, I, I'd like to think feet. so because the taller I got, the less outward uh, balance I had. I fall over all the time. I say, just like Joe, two knee surgeries. Whew, I believe it's my little feet that are the problem. There, uh, the whole end of this movie, uh, po like, has this big dilemma between, oh no, your sister's wedding's the same day as the soccer match. What are you gonna choose? You obviously choose the wedding. You choose the no. wedding. In what fucking world is this even a conflict? No, are you crazy? Are Hold you on. crazy? Hold the phone. I'm holding. Hold the phone. Consider it held. Her sister. Yes. Okay. Last second reignited this wedding. Okay. She didn't check with anyone. Hey, is anyone busy this day? <laughs> I, I. Selfish. I, I'm going to tell you when I planned my wedding, I did not check to see if anyone was busy. Yeah. You should probably check to see if your sister's there. No, you choose a wedding. What do you mean? Are you busy? What? What? No. It's my sister's wedding. Second of all. She had, you ever have one shot, one opportunity to make everything you ever wanted. Do not eight mile me. Yeah, or mom's let spaghetti. it slip yeah. right between your fingertips because there was going to be a scout at this game and it was the last game of the tournament of that summer and she would have had to go on to university the next season. So, <laughs> Zachary, I do say you choose the soccer game. It is the rest of your life, but you will never see your uh, sister get married again. Indian weddings are like three days long. The they are. I do they are say three days long. You get a two-hour break out of that miss, to go to the fucking You can miss one-eighth of it. <laughs> <laughs> there exactly. are, they are three days long. Um, I rest so, my case. So that is something. Right. Um, and how cute was that moment of like the soccer team trying to help her back into her sari and her dress? And oh, that I was love beautiful. that shot. It was it darling. Was so I love that she talked to the scout in her dress. In her dress. Yeah. It, was, it was very, it was a weird, they didn't put a, a, a pin on it at mm -hmm. all or like a point about it but it was just a nice little like um this is my culture you're going to have to accept me for all that i am mm -hmm. type of moment i loved it you know uh you may call leaving a uh, indian wedding and coming back undetected unrealistic but i recently went to my first indian wedding in new york we were eating dinner um everything was cream based oh. can't, i can't eat that uh but there was a vegetarian meal made special for me 
loaded with bell peppers. I can't oh, eat that. No. So it was just poison or poison. Yeah. And so I left. I went to Shake Shack. <gasps> Great. I got a that? I got a I got a chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah. In my beautiful attire. And wow. I came back and no one was none the wise. Sorry, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the image of you walking through the streets of, of New York. Near Times Square. Near Times Square. I can hear the in, music in the background. Yeah. <laughs> and and you just like sitting in the window like like Nighthawk <laughs> eating fucking Shake Shack, looking out at the people walking and then coming back. And I inhaled back. that sandwich oh, yeah. because also I had to learn me and my high school friends had to learn an Indian dance to surprise her with. Oh, yeah. To perform. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, I cannot miss this dance. Yeah. But I'm also shaking so with hungry. hunger. And let me tell you what. I killed that shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> the chicken sandwich. Hell yeah. Does your friend know that you left? Nope. Wow. Well, right. Send this clip straight to him. Yeah. She won't. Don't tell her. Great. It's on the internet, baby, forever. <laughs> She'll never know. She don't listen. Um, Thinking back on the moment where Jess and Joe almost kiss, and then um, Kira Knightley's character uh, is, walks is, in on them. Walks in on them, um, and then she just calls her a, b- a bitch. You I bitch. get that that is the dramatic t- uh, turn that you should take. Mm-hmm. What I wanted to happen was to her was for her to see it and then be like. Good for you. Aww. And then just kind of walk away. And then they have like a weird relationship that, you know, where they kind of talk but kind of don't. Um, and then she finally just says, I had a crush on him and you went and talked to him. But not like screaming out, you bitch. That's like very like catty in a way that the Will movie. Will Mel's mad. Yeah. Might, the movie I, didn't really might I reframe? Feel. Watch that scene again. Imagine she's saying you bitch to Joe. Joe. To Joe. Yeah. It becomes a lot better of a scene. Yeah. You're right. I'm going to tell you what, uh, Joe and Jess, first of all, two J names, screenwriting nightmare. Hmm. You never do that. Yeah. What's Keira Knightley's character's name? I have no do idea. any of us remember? Probably like Diane or something. <laughs> Does anyone remember? Uh, let's find we out. We keep just saying Keira Knightley's well, full Keira name. Knight- Juliet. Wait, oh, what the fuck? Jules. 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 There's four Jules. J, three J names. And I remember writing this down. Jules is the ultimate bisexual name. Hmm. Iconic, you're gonna have a bisexual character. Gotta it's name gotta him be Jules. Jules. Wait, but literally, that is there's there's I mean, it's not like a rule, but when you're writing a script, whatever your first letter is, it brings up your characters. So having characters with the same oh, first no. letter three, yeah, it just sucks. Yeah. You just never do that. Yeah. So to have th- your three main characters, JJJ, wow, awful. Yeah. Eric is closing his eyes and he's in pain. Yeah, J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, that's all I heard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's absolutely insane. So Joe and Jess, they are edging us this entire movie. Ooh! They are they are not kissing. And I'm going to tell you what, they finally kiss in the airport. It's a hot kiss. Yeah, Yeah, but I didn't fucking believe it for a second. You're going to look at me in the eyes and tell me that's not a hot kiss? It was a hot kiss. I, I was like boo. that she was like, I like that she was like, uh, you... I've already done enough to my parents. I can't date a white guy too. <laughs> I and, thought that was yeah. very funny. And but then why I didn't believe it is because then Jules is like, "Look, it's David Beckham," and she gives it a glance like, <laughs> "Crazy Jules," and I'm like, "Bitch, it's the it's your movie hero." Is named it's, after your kick after your hero. Yeah. Nah, the dick ain't that good. <laughs> it ain't. It just ain't. It can't be. Mm-mm. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. You're telling me. It can't me, be. You're telling me you've never gotten a D so good that you don't care about David Beckham? Maybe Victoria Beckham. <laughs> Wait, have you ever thought about saying it can't be in so many different ways? Put the emphasis on the, a different word each time. It can't be. It can't be. It can't it's- can't be. <laughs> it can't um, I be. Just, before I move us on to the next section, I feel like I did a lot of really good Irish accent work, and I yeah. didn't get to hear you either of you attempt it. Oh, you want me to do Irish then? All right. That's pretty good. It's Thanks, maybe. Rainy. It yes. wasn't good, and then it was excellent. <laughs> like yes. you, it was. I'm Irish. I'm, I'm Irish. Of course, I understand. I'm that Irish. Was, that was standard that was, that was British. British. I can do Cockney really well because it's a bit trashy. Yeah. 
We also got through this whole episode without saying anything really mean about the Brits, which is un, uncommon Unlike for us. us. Unlike us, you guys eat beans and toast. There's Delicious. no fucking way. Delicious. No, f- ew, disgusting. You oh. haven't had a full English? Yes, I've fucking eaten all of that shit. There's no way. What? What? You don't like a full English? No. No. What? It's fine. What, what is a full English? A full English breakfast Blood is like sausage, beans. On, yeah. Beans. Eggy. Uh, it's like fucking all toast. they eat. Uh, what am I missing? Tomatoes. Yeah. Anyway. Um, the Brits are renowned for the their The fact food. that she burned her leg. The fact that she burned her leg um, trying to make beans and toast uh, is toast. Tr- truly not even close to worth it. Y'all ready for some fun facts? Fun facts. First of all, uh, shout out to the director, Gorinda Chata. We uh, haven't mentioned you. Yeah, same director as a movie you guys did the other day. Yeah. Which we loved. Um, snogs and snogging. I just call Angus. it snogging. Um, so shout out. You killed it. Uh, Davey Bex, he was a big supporter of the movie. <gasps> nice. So Chata chose him for the titular player. Yeah, because he's great. Because of his skills and fandom. But oh. it wasn't a sure bet that uh, that they would approve the name and likeness being used. But when they approached Becky's, he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a 2015 interview, uh, Chata recounted that Beckham said, quote, I wholeheartedly support this because I support girls football and I want families to come to matches. Wow. Aww. What it? So there's this one clip of David Beckham who owns or is a, part, a partial, partial owner of Inter Miami, um, their football club, and he is by himself. Like, this was, like, years ago, by himself watching the game um, because nobody's coming to Inter Miami team, uh, Inter Miami, and they they sang a song about him, like, f- seeming lonely, mm. and then five years later, he got messy on the team, and now it's, like, full of people, oh. and people will go back to that clip, and they're like, he literally took that personally. I'm going to tell you something that I would never admit. I hate watching soccer. Oh, boy. I loved playing it. <laughs> On the telly, can't stand it. Oh, God. I've never been you, to a live British you, soccer match. This, this, I'm going to do my pleasure early. Okay. Well, I, we're at the end, so. Uh, we're, we're about at the end. Um, <laughs> I went to, and I, I might have said this on the fucking You show. did. You I went did. to a game I with went your cousin. To, um, I went to, to, to London with my cousin to watch Chelsea play Arsenal, and those are two rival teams. Um. And I, I truly, truly, truly believe that was one of the, if not the greatest sporting event I've ever been to. Yeah, it is I need the to go greatest to a live sporting event. event. They're they're phenomenal. It's everybody singing. I don't drink anymore. Will it still be as fun? Yes, I didn't drink. Oh, my cousin doesn't drink either. Anyway, it's sick. You cool. should go see them live. It is not like um, uh, watching baseball live, where it's just like, oh, this is nice to talk. I'm saving myself. <laughs> okay. So I told you that I thought that this was one of the best titles. Ever. Mm. But the studio, they wanted a different title. Of course. They were urging, not bend it like Beckham, move it like Mia. I get it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I hate it. It I doesn't get it. have the same. It doesn't, it doesn't work. The, the title doesn't work as well. You said soccer so many times, by the way. I have? Oh, yeah. Fuck. And I didn't, because you were like saying something. So I was like, I don't want to interrupt him. Because remember when Zach said I interrupt too much, so I didn't. But <laughs> someone go back Dits. and count how many Garrick had this uh, round. Fuck. Uh, you lost your own game. I lost like, my own game. Uh, Gary Knightley was 16 when they shot this. What? what? You Okay. That's Wild. That's crazy. Maybe I just I, see Kira Knightley as an adult, an, an adult a every 24 time year old forever because she acts very mature. She was also super young in Love Actually, but wow, wild. Uh, uh, the football coaches who trained her said that she was incredible and that by the end she could, quote, do th- things some Premier League players can't do. If I had trained her from the age of 10 or 11, without a shadow of a doubt, Kira could have been a pro. That's sick. Whoa, dude. Yeah. Now that I'm realizing she was the same age as her character in school about to go to college. She was younger. Yeah. <laughs> she was younger than she was playing. She was tall. Meanwhile, um, like 16. how tall is she? Meanwhile, the actress who played Jess uh, was 26. Oh, wow. 10 year gap between the two actresses. Weird. Yeah. 
Weird. Wow. Yeah, that's blowing my mind. Yeah, that's a little I, bit crazy. I don't. I refuse to believe it. Um, and then the last that makes me laugh. Uh, oh, actually, two of these. These are both good. So, uh, Gorinda Chada didn't know anything about soccer. So when she was writing it, she really relied on her co-writers, and she would just write jargon, jargon, football jargon, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then have so them like fill twenty it up. pages was just blank that yeah. she let them do. That's just great. blah blah soccer stuff, soccer stuff, blah blah. I didn't see any like throw-ins. That was one thing we were missing. <laughs> oh yeah, we only got one cartwheel back handspring. Uh, and then the final fun fact that delights me is that many of the wedding guests in the movie were her relatives. Ah! Nice. Um, and they really threw themselves into the scene and treated it like a real wedding. I love it. I also love the, the end credits of this movie do something that's like, it's it yes. felt very Bollywood, yeah. uh, where it was just a sing-along montage of uh, all the cast and crew. Yeah. Um, it was great. What it was, was the song? It's getting hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Yep. Feeling hot, hot, hot. But like a, a Indian version, which yeah. is fun. Now it's time for us to decide, is this movie a pleasure, a guilty pleasure, or just plain guilty? And actually, let's let's uh, review, because it's obviously <laughs> a pleasure. It's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, is this movie gay, a little gay, or super gay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this movie is certified lesbian. Oh. That's my take. Lesbian. I'm going to say it's not gay, uh, as gay as it deserves to be. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say this movie is closeted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a great film. It yeah. really holds up. It's it's delightful. Yeah. Um, everything that, you know, all the reasons that it charmed audiences back then still hold. I, I think that if this came out today, it would be a hit in the same way that it was oh, then. Yeah. yeah. This oh, would be absolutely. like um like a, a festival darling. To, to yep. the point where if if they did remake it, this is one that I would it would oh, feel yeah. earned. You know, or just like, totally. okay, that is a that is the remake. Because they had a story that they weren't allowed to tell. Yep. Oh, you mean if they remake it and double down on the gay? Yeah. They, they full gay. Yeah. It, it would. Yeah. It would be fully earned, and everybody would be like, "Oh, that's what they were trying to do. Mm. That's what they meant to do." I'd watch it. Yeah, and um, I like a lot of things are getting remade now. Where you're just like, "Who's asking for that?" I'm asking for a remake of this. <laughs> Once again, guilty horse. We have come to you on this podcast yeah. to ask you, Bennett Lake Beckham, to tweet at the people responsible yes. for making this happen. Yes. Mm. Same writer, same director. Mm. I'm um, thinking about maybe it. Maybe double the budget. Okay. Well, I'm at Corndon and all the things. I'm Kelsey Dara on all the things. I'm Garrick Bernard on all the things. And until next time, juicy, juicy, like mangoes. Thank you. <laughs>